Hello viewers, welcome back to this immigration program here on AIL TV. As you know, this is part of a series of programs that we are having on AIL TV to just educate you viewers on immigration law in the UK um, because we feel this is quite a relevant subject, especially now that uh, the, 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 the government has been bringing about a lot of reforms last time we talked about the changes well some of the changes that have been introduced by the government recently but today we're going to move on to actually talk about uh, applying for leave to remain in the uk uh, we're going to do this in stages we're going to look at different categories uh, of visas that people can apply for so today we are looking at the private life rules yes we're talking about these rules and we're going to discuss who's eligible under the, under the rules and what they can do um, to, 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 to obtain leave to remain on the basis of their private life. Just to give you a bit of a background to the private life rules, they are fairly new rules uh, because they were introduced in July 2012. Before that, what we had was the 14-year rule which provided that if a person has lived in the UK without valid leave for 14 years, they can apply for indefinite leave to remain. So a person will become eligible for indefinite leave to remain after living in the UK illegally uh, for 14 years. It could be part illegal stay and part lawful residence. It could be a combination of the two, but you could get your indefinite after 14 years. That rule is gone. And what has been uh, uh, introduced in place of that rule are the private life rules. So these rules were established to help cater for, I think, a majority of people who will be here without leave to remain, or those who have leave to remain, but they feel that they no longer are eligible under any of the categories under the immigration rules. So if you feel, oh, I've been a student for 10 years, I've been a student for eight years and I can't fit any other category because I'm not studying or I can no longer fit under the employment rules. You might want to check whether you will be eligible to apply under the private life rules. There are th oh, four different categories actually under the private life rules of applications that can be made. The first one is an application by a child who has lived in the UK for at least seven years. So the first private life rule is regarding children who have lived in the UK for at least seven years. So if you have a child who's lived here for at least seven years, you can uh, apply for them to obtain leave to remain on the basis that they've lived in the UK for at least seven years. Now, seven years does not mean that it's automatic. You get the leave to remain. There's another requirement, which is that you must demonstrate that it's not reasonable for the child to relocate um, uh, from the UK. So the first requirement is they've lived in the UK seven years. The second requirement is that it must, uh, it must not be reasonable for them to relocate. That is difficult to establish in most cases. So it's not a straightforward application. It's not as straightforward as it seems. So if you feel that you are affected or you know someone who's affected and you'd like to help them to make an application, then seek legal advice before you put in an application on the basis of that rule. The other rule, the other private life rule is regarding people who have turned 18 but are less than the age of 25. So it's for people who are between the age of 18 and 25 who can demonstrate that they have lived in the UK for at least half of their life. So if you're no longer a child, but you're a young person, you're saying, I came here when I was a child, I've lived here for more than half of my life, you can apply for leave to remain. But again, these are not straightforward applications. You have to seek advice before you complete the forms because they are quite complex forms to complete for this type of application. The third category is for people who have lived in the UK for 20 years. So if you've lived in the UK for 20 years, you can apply for leave to remain. It's not indefinite leave to remain, it's just leave to remain. The fourth category is for those people who are adults who have lived in the UK for less than 20 years, but they can demonstrate that they no longer have any ties to the country that they came from. 
they can apply as well under that rule. That is not an easy application again because you have to satisfy the home office that you have no remaining family, social, cultural, or other ties to your country. In my experience, that is a very difficult test to meet because you will have some form of tie to your country, whether it's through the language you speak or family that's still living there or culturally because you live in, in, in a culture or you live in a society where people speak your language, uh, in a diaspora community. So it's very difficult to meet that requirement. It's not impossible, but it is difficult. These applications are not easy applications to make. So my advice is if, if you are thinking of applying for leave to remain and you can't fit any other category, check whether you could fit under these uh, private life rules. We've talked about four different types of applications that can be made uh, under the private life rules. The application form is a very lengthy and complex form to complete. And again, my advice is before you even attempt to complete that form, do seek advice in your matter because no application is straightforward. And if you don't satisfy the home office that you meet the requirements, the application will be refused. So to avoid that, take steps to make sure you're completing your forms uh, uh, properly and you know what you're actually doing. Now, these, these are the private life rules. If you feel you are eligible, you want to talk about them, you can contact me using the details that are appearing on the screen right now or seek advice from a professional. It's not seeking advice from a person who's not um, qualified to give advice. It's actually going to a professional that you can trust will give you good advice. Um, next time on the program, we'll move on to talk about applying for leave to remain either as a partner or as a parent. So we'll look at the rules that are applicable to people who are in that situation, people who are in a relationship with a person who's settled in the UK, or people who are saying, I'm a single parent, I've got a child, what can I do? Or people who are saying that, look, I've got children, my partner and I have children, uh, what can I do? Shall I apply under the, private, the, the, the partner route or apply under the, the child route? We'll discuss those in the pro in the um, next program. But that's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in and keep tuned in for the future programs. Thank you.